This is the Blaring Out with Eric Blair show. And we're chilling in the Hollywood Hills at the photo shoot of the premiere issue of Jerk of All Trades magazine. And we have Mickey Avalon. So you're doing a shoot here today. We're yeah. doing a shoot. They all know that you're the one who made me this. Yeah, place. well, now they do. He's Eric he's Blair. a jerk of all trades. Yeah. I now, threw that in there. You need to definitely tell us like about your relationship with Maggie St. Thomas as a photographer and what makes her great. She's awesome and takes great pictures. At what age did you discover that you had the talent of rapping and writing songs? I'm still trying to discover that, but I started rapping just for fun when I was a kid. I'd say the first, like, I don't know, maybe 15 or 16. But like, I didn't know I was gonna ever do it like for a living or anything. You know, I just got lucky kind of, I guess, with that. Like now people, you could have like a whole studio and like a computer. Like at one time you have to save a whole bunch of money to go make a demo and then, so like there wasn't anything I really wanted to try to do and that, if that was when I grew up, that would never happen because I would have never done that. But it was more just when people started having studios in their houses, then I'd do it with them for fun and then stuff actually went on to like a CD and then people gave those out. So the first CDs that got passed around, I didn't know they were getting passed. I lived at a, actually it was, I lived in like a sober living house uh, in like Van Nuys or something and I had to be home by midnight curfew. So I go to one of my friend's house, uh, Simon, he's not, we're not friends anymore, but, and uh, we just make songs for fun. I didn't know he was giving them out at the clubs because I couldn't go to clubs because I had to go back by midnight but then I found out and then I was kind of bummed that he was giving him because I thought we were just like fucking around like I thought half the shit was like super retarded because uh, we just say dumb shit and then but then people started digging it and then this dude called me who was my first manager and I thought it was Simon fucking with me so then he's like is this Mickey Allen? And I'm like, yeah. What? And he's like, hey, we really like your stuff. I'm like, yeah, like you. T-. Like I told, and I was like, wait. I'm like, okay. And then it was, and then he said his name. I don't want to say his name, but then he said it. And that's it was a funny name too. So I really thought he was messing around, but then uh, he wasn't. So then I went in there, and that's kind of when the whole thing started. And that I thought was just gonna be over in a month or two. Looking back in hindsight, now I see like if someone wants to do music, you have to make songs, and then you have to go and play those songs, and then people dig it then it would keep going so but I, I, since there's nothing I ever thought about I didn't know about that process so I just listened to what the people told me to do so like when I when I met that manager dude they're like go record some songs because all those things weren't they weren't songs they were just like rapping but like not like hooks or anything yeah. like that I even remember he saw go, go in he's like well we like what you got but he's like do you know how to write choruses and I was like what's what's a chorus and he's like a hook. I go, oh, yeah, I can do that. So then they said, all up till then, all the managers I had were for like minimum wage jobs. And the manager is the guy who pay you. Like in this thing, you pay your manager. So, but I didn't know that. So when, when in the meeting, they said they want to work with me, I go, well, could you give me, they want me to go record these songs. So I go, could you give me like uh, 1500 bucks, like a month so I could pay my bills and stuff. And so I could record those songs. And then they said, yeah. So then I thought, that was like the biggest come up in my life. Like in my head, I was like 45 hours. I was like, these bridges will probably totally burn in the next three months. But like, I wasn't thinking about this music career. I was, you know, I was thinking like, I can't believe this. But then in that time, we recorded all those songs, which is most pretty much my first record. And then like I said, then he's like, okay, we're gonna work on the show. And I, there's nothing I've ever done. Like I wasn't like, uh, theater kid or music like I didn't do any of that stuff so but I was just going with this whole thing like it just kind of came and ignorance isn't always bliss but this was a thing where like being naive to the whole process was a, a good thing and besides Simon passing the CDs out I worked at a pizza shop in Venice it was called Bravo Pizza we'd wrap them in LA Express tranny ads and escort ads and give them out. So the first gig was at the Roxy. I've never really been like stage fright kind of, it's just, you know, anything you do for the first time is like, so had my back to the crowd. And then I knew once I got into the song, then I could just focus on the song and I'd be fine. So like half verse in, I like turn around and everyone already knew all the words for all the songs because we gave them out and they were like singing along and it was just a trip and then kind of went. From there. What is the hardest thing that you feel that you've had to overcome in your life to be where you're at? Well, 
I haven't overcome anything. Like, until, I guess until you die, you're just always overcoming things. But, I mean, with this whole thing, it's just, per, you know, persevering, I guess. With, uh, I don't really feel like I have, uh, like, I really have an option because I have a kid. And that's why, like, whole money aspect. I mean, you need money to live, but, like, I can't call my uh, my daughter's mom and be like, or call my daughter and be like, child support's not going to come this month but but daddy made some really good artistic uh choice you know what i mean like not as far as selling out or anything but like i need to make i need to like make money mm -hmm. so because if not if i was like a rich kid or a rich old up kid um i just could still make music but i don't have to fucking i could play when i want not play when i want you just collaborated with travis barker of blink 182 you're right we did a song we did two songs, but uh, I just didn't know if he was gonna put them on his album or because there's political stuff. Because I got, I just got my record label and stuff. But uh, we did do a song, and actually, it's more than you even know for your question because it's called Fast Life, and it's a, a good song, a super good song, and a really good friend of mine, uh, Andy Irons, who recently passed away, uh, three-time surfing world champion. That was the so he used that song for uh, his last part in his. Uh, movie right before he passed away in his surfing movie and that's what it was fast life it's uh live fast die young and look good in your grave so it's pretty ironic since me and travis made that song three people died and three people associated in the whole thing his assistant little chris who's the guy who brought me in there to work with travis on the song then am passed away who travis worked with and we knew together, and then Andy, who used the song for... So anyone out there, don't use that song for <laughs> your movies. You actually opened for the Chili Peppers on mm -hmm. tour, and so I know that they're huge fans of yours. Otherwise, they wouldn't have had you open for them. That's, mm -hmm. that's, a, very, that's a big honor. Yeah, yeah now, I'm friends with John. And yeah, now I'm wondering, what would you think of you, just for the hell of it, like do a four-song EP, you, John... And Travis, and then get Flea to play bass and do some raps like that. Yeah, well, no, I'd love to. Me and John were supposed to. Yeah, yeah. And I don't even think he's in the band anymore. I, I no, think he's he, not. so. Yeah, no. With I mean, with uh, with him, you know, it just depends on what's. going I don't know what's going on in his life right now, but yeah, that'd be awesome. I mean, if Tra yeah, that'd be awesome. It's you, even just me and John would be. I mean, anyway, I did a bunch of collaborations, uh, and they'll all get out. I did a song with Perry Farrell. Which that was like the guy I looked up to the, out of all these I'm about to tell you that's that was the did one with Perry Farrell I did one with Kid Rock. What do you think of what's going on with Charlie Sheen right now? Uh, well, I was in Australia when when it was all going down, and I heard like the first things and it was funny. But like at first I thought it was like a one time and you know like I heard the thing about the hotel and whatever. But then like I saw it and and then I realized I was like wait he's like he's going all the way. like it it wasn't like a one it started as a one night thing but now he's just like. I mean, I, the, I think it's all good. It's all funny, but the only problem with the whole thing, because it is, you know, living, I live. It's just that he has two little kids. You know, what I mean, if it wasn't for the kids, like I would totally be championing the whole thing because he's literally, without actually holding the pipe and hitting, he's literally basically smoking crack like on the news. Like he's like. Like I said, it's not on camera, but we're probably talking tense. Some of those rants, or he's just been up for fucking so. I mean, it's. <laughs> He's got, I mean, they're quote. Anytime you got the whole world say, quoting, like saying your quotes, yeah. like Tiger Blood is like now in the fucking Webster's Dictionary. Wow. I mean, I don't know if it is, but uh, yeah, he's just, I mean, shit, if you, when, when I'm an old man, if I could have little fucking little pretty hookers around, hanging out with me and taking care of me, fucking getting high with me, I'd be, I must have done something right. But they don't really love him, though. That's the, that's the thing. You want to surround yeah, yourself with people that really love you. Well, then you won't be able to have any fun. What? You don't want people to... <laughs> people that love you don't let you hurt yourself. How would you define the word love? Mm, I don't know. Uh, I don't know anything about it. Are you a spiritual person? I mean, I don't know. I believe in spirits. I mean, I believe more than all this. So I guess, yeah. I mean, I don't like pray or nothing like that. But... I'm look. I'm trying. I'm reaching out for Nirvana, <laughs> one bag at a time. What brings you the most peace in your life right now? Oh uh, God, sleep. I guess. No, uh, I don't know. Honestly, my my meditation is probably just like watching reality TV. I mean, I just zone out, like, because then sometimes I'll be like, this is so. I'll come too, 
And I'm like, what are you doing? But it's really that I'm just, that's like pretty, like the most out of my head I could be, you know? Because it's like I'm, I'm not home much. I'm gone. Like not even in my, this town. And then when I'm here, it's usually like I'm super, super beat. So I'll think like, God, you got to do something with yourself. And then I'm like, wait, what are you talking about? You just got, you've like been away, you've been like, playing every night for so long just relax and so this is more like vet veg out you know like there's nothing i gotta do when i'm here unless i'm here for like a stretch and if i'm here for a stretch i'm probably recording and doing stuff like that so right now i'm pretty busy like i just got back from australia and then i go to canada but then i actually have a minute off and that will be and we're getting we finally got some songs out like we, they're a whole you know taking forever with the record and I got off my record label so I can get it out, but since still it, it takes a minute to rap, you know, do it right. Plus, my record label old one owns a bunch of my stuff, so the songs will get out. Those songs will get out. Like doesn't matter. I mean, they'll get out just so people can have them. The money thing doesn't really matter. But we're going to be giving out other songs like a few a month. So, that, like we took a bunch to Australia and they got picked up on the radio. But they do. They're like these free cards, and then you get like two songs a month or something. And then, then we'll put out like the whole twelve at a time. But there'll be. A, there, I mean, I got like a hundred songs. So it's not. The record hasn't taken forever because I didn't have the work, and it hasn't taken forever because I was doing like a Chinese democracy. Like, take it. Just like I said, all this bullshit. And I try to do things, I got to where I got doing things my way. Then you try to like take to next level and deal with all these fucking idiots. And then I should have done it my way the whole time because those were the only mi mistakes I made by trying to be like humble and listen to, because I didn't, you know, listen to someone who I thought knew better about this stuff. And But at least the work has been done, which is cool. You know, that if the work, the work is all that matters for anything. If you're painting, it's the paintings. If it's so, if you if you're doing all these paintings for a gallery or a museum and the gallery burned down, but you still did the fucking paintings, like you're straight. You can put them anywhere. So whether or not, and I don't really make money off my off my uh, record sales anyhow. Like I just need people to come to the shows and so so if the songs are good and and I've been playing all these songs and everyone digs them. They're probably on YouTube. So they go to Australia every year for the last four years, but this year we went to Perth for the first time. And uh, they they broke the barricades and that's on YouTube. They broke the barricades and rioted at the end. It was insane. Wow. Like so, and I haven't put a record out in five years. Favorite collaborations? Uh, probably Perry Farrell. It wasn't necessarily my favorite. It's probably actually, I mean, not because of Perry. Just the whole the producer was a schmuck and all this stuff. But probably the least good song. But the fact that I worked with Perry. And my friend Elijah, Elijah Blue, yeah, yeah. we make some cool songs. He's trying, he's in Berlin right now, and he's trying to get me to fly. I think I'm gonna fly. He's gonna fly me out there uh, soon. You know why he's in Berlin, right? You know what? You know what the mystique about Berlin is, correct? Well, yeah, because he, he even said, "Come out, we'll be like Bowie and Iggy." And yeah. That stuff, yeah, the trilogy, the yeah, Berlin yeah, trilogy. Yeah, so that's, yeah, he's fully like that. So yeah, that's what we're trying to do. We did Mickey's Girl and uh, and Suicide and uh, Mickey's Girl. Uh, Elijah uh, sings, look out for me, he's good, and he sounds exactly like Lou Reed, and Lou Reed, uh, except, like, yeah, he gave, no, he gave us permission, normal, like, usually you have to give up all the money, or, like, he took, he'll, t if we put it out, he'll take all the money, but just the fact, he doesn't give, uh, pe he doesn't let people do that, so, Lou Reed, so there it is. Blaring out with Eric Blair show on the set of Jerk of All Trades. Magazine with Mickey Avalon signing off. The Blaring Out Show. That's the, that's the thing. You want to surround yeah. yourself with people that really love you. Well, then you won't be able to have any fun. What? You don't want people to... <laughs> people that love you don't let you hurt yourself. How would you define the word love? Mm, I don't know. Uh, I don't know anything about it. Are you a spiritual person? I mean, I don't know. I believe in spirits. I mean, I believe more than all this. So I guess, yeah. I mean, I don't like pray or nothing like that. But I'm look. I'm trying. I'm reaching out for Nirvana, one, one bag at a time. What brings you the most peace in your life right now? Oh uh, God, sleep. I guess no. Uh, I don't know. Honestly, my my meditation is probably just like watching reality TV. I mean, I just zone out, like, because then sometimes I'll be like, this is so. I'll come to, and I'm like, what are you doing? But it's really that I'm just. That's like pretty like the most out of my head I could be, you know, because it's like I'm, 
I'm not home much. I'm gone. Like, not even in my, this town. And then when I'm here, it's usually, like, I'm super, super beat. So I'll think, like, God, you got to do something with yourself. And then I'm like, wait, what are you talking about? You just got, you've been, like, been away, you've been, like, playing every night for so long. Just relax. And so this is more, like, ve veg out, you know? Like, there's nothing I got to do when I'm here unless I'm here for, like, a stretch. And if I'm here for a stretch... I'm probably recording and doing stuff like that. So right now, I'm pretty busy. Like, I just got back from Australia, and then I go to Canada. But then I actually have a minute off, and that will be... And we're getting... We finally got some songs out. Like we, they're whole, you know, taking forever with the record. And call, I got off my record label so I can get it out. But since still, it takes a minute to rap, you know, do it right. Plus... My record label, Old One, owns a bunch of my stuff. So the songs will get out. Those songs will get out. Like, doesn't matter. I mean, they'll get out just so people can have them. The money thing doesn't really matter. But we're going to be giving out other songs, like a few a month. So, that, like, we took a bunch to Australia and they got picked up on the. When out there, don't use that song for <laughs> your movies. You actually opened for the Chili Peppers on mm -hmm. tour. And so I know that they're huge fans of yours. Otherwise, they wouldn't have had you open for them. That's, mm -hmm. that's, a, very, that's a big honor. Yeah, yeah, now, I'm friends with John. And yeah, now I'm wondering, what would you think of you, just for the hell of it, like do a four-song EP, you, John, and Travis, and then get Flea to play bass and do some raps like that? Yeah, well, no, I'd love to. Me and John were supposed to. Yeah, yeah, and I don't even think he's in the band anymore. I, I no, think he's he, So, yeah, no, with, I mean, with... Uh, with him, you know, it just depends on what's going I don't know what's going on in his life right now. But, yeah, that would be awesome. I mean, if tra yeah, that would be awesome. It's you, even just me and John would be I mean, anyway, I did a bunch of collaborations, uh, and they'll all get out. I did a song with Perry Farrell, which that was, like, the guy I looked up to. The out of all these I'm about to tell you, that's, mm -hmm. that was the – did one with Perry Farrell. I did one with Kid Rock. What do you think of what's going on with Charlie Sheen right now? Uh, well, I was in Australia when, when it was all going down. And I heard, like, the first things, and it was funny. But, like, at first I thought it was, like, a one-time, you know? Like, I heard the thing about the hotel and whatever. But then, like, I saw it, and, and then I realized, I was like, wait, he's, like, he's going all the way. Like, it, it wasn't, like, a one It started as a one-night thing, but now he's just, like... I mean, uh, the, I think it's all good. It's all funny. But the only problem with the whole thing, because, you know, live and I live, it's just that he has two little kids. You know what I mean? If it wasn't for the kids, like, I would totally be championing the whole thing because he's literally... Without actually holding the pipe and hitting, he's literally basically smoking crack like on the news. Like he's like, like I said, it's not on camera, but we're probably talking tense. Some of those rants, or he's just been up for fucking so. I mean, it's he, he's got. I mean, they're quote. Anytime you got the whole world say quoting like saying your quotes, yeah. like Tiger Blood is like now in the fucking Webster's Dictionary. Wow. I mean, I don't know if it is, but uh, yeah, he's just. I mean, shit. If you when when I'm an old man, if I could have little fucking little pretty hookers around, hanging out with me and taking care of me, and fucking getting high with me, I mean, I must have done something right. But they don't really love him, though. This is the Blaring Out with Eric Blair show, and we're chilling in the Hollywood Hills at the photo shoot of the premiere issue of Jerk of All Trades magazine and we have Mickey Avalon so you're doing a shoot here today we're yeah. doing a shoot they all know that you're the one who made me this yeah place. well now they do he's Eric he's Blair. a jerk of all trades yeah I now, threw that in there you need to definitely tell us like about your relationship with Maggie St. Thomas as a photographer and what makes her great she's awesome and takes great pictures at what age did you discover that you had the talent of rapping and writing songs I'm still trying to discover that but I started rapping just for fun when I was a kid. I'd say the first, like, I don't know, maybe 15 or 16. But, like, I didn't know I was going to ever do it, like, for a living or anything. You know, I just got lucky, kind of, I guess, with that. Like, now people, you could have, like, a whole studio and, like, a computer. Like, at one time, you have to save a whole bunch of money to go make a demo. And then, so, like, there wasn't anything I really wanted to try to do. And that, if that was when I grew up, that would never happen because I would have never done that. But it was more... Just when people started having studios in their houses, then I'd do it with them for fun. And then stuff actually went on to like a CD and then people gave those out. So the first CDs that got passed around, I didn't know they were getting passed. I lived at a, actually it was, I lived in like a sober living house uh, in like Van Nuys or something. And I had to be home by midnight curfew. So I go to one of my friend's house, uh, 
Simon. He's not. We're not friends anymore. But and uh, we just make songs for fun. I didn't know he was giving them out at the clubs because I couldn't go to clubs because I had to go back by midnight. But then I found out, and then I was kind of bummed that he was giving them out because I thought we were just like fucking around. Like I thought half the shit was like super retarded because uh, we just say dumb shit. And then, but then people started digging it, and then this dude called me who was my first manager. And I thought it was Simon fucking with me. So then he's like, is this Mickey Allen? And I'm like, yeah. What? And he's like, hey, we really like your stuff. I'm like, yeah, like you. T-. Like I told, and I was like, wait, I'm like, okay. And then it was, and then he said his name. I don't want to say his name, but then he said it. And that's, it was a funny name too. So I really thought he was messing around, but then uh, he wasn't. So then I went in there and that's kind of when the whole thing started. And that I thought was just going to be over in a month or two. Looking back in hindsight, now I see like if someone wants to do music, you have to make songs, and then you have to go and play those songs, and then if people dig it, then it would keep going. So, But I, I, since there's nothing I ever thought about, I didn't know about that process, so I just listened to what the people told me to do. So like when I when I met that manager dude, they're like, go record some songs. Because all those things weren't, they weren't songs. They were just like rapping, but like not like hooks or anything yeah. like that. I even remember he saw... Go, go in, he's like, well, we like what you got, but he's like, do you know how to write choruses? And I was like, what's what's a chorus? And he's like, a hook. I go, oh, yeah, I can do that. So then they said, all up till then, all the managers I had were for, like, minimum wage jobs, and the manager is the guy who pay you. Like, in this thing, you pay your manager. So, But I didn't know that. So when, when in the meeting, they said they want to work with me, I go, well, could you give me... They wanted me to go record these songs, so I go, could you give me, like, uh, 1500 bucks like, a month so I could pay my bills and stuff and so I could record those songs? And then they said, yeah. So then I thought, that was, like, the biggest come up in my life. Like, in my head, I was, like, 4500 I was, like, Th- these bridges will probably totally burn in the next three months. But, like, I wasn't thinking about this music career. I was, you know, I was thinking, like, I can't believe this. But then in that time, we recorded all those songs, which is most pretty much my first record. And then, like I said, then he's like, okay, we're going to work on the show. And I, there's nothing I've ever done. Like, I wasn't, like, a theater kid or a music. Like, I didn't do any of that stuff. So, but I was just going with this whole thing. Like, it just kind of came. And ignorance isn't always bliss, but this was a thing where, like, being naive to the whole process was a, a good thing. And besides Simon passing the CDs out, I worked at a pizza shop in Venice. It was called Bravo Pizza. We'd wrap them in LA Express tranny ads and escort ads and give them out. So the first gig was at the Roxy. I've never really been like stage fright kind of, it's just, you know, anything you do for the first time is like, so had my back to the crowd. And then I knew once I got into the song, then I could just focus on the song and I'd be fine. So like half verse in, I like turn around and everyone already knew all the words for all the songs because we gave them out and they're like singing along and it was just a trip and then kind of went. From there. What is the hardest thing that you feel that you've had to co- overcome in your life to be where you're at? Well, I haven't overcome anything. Like, until, I guess until you die, you're just always overcoming things. But, I mean, with this whole thing, it's just, per, you know, persevering, I guess. With, uh, I don't really feel like I have, uh, like, I really have an option because I have a kid. And that's why, like, whole money aspect. I mean, you need money to live, but... Like I can't call my uh, my daughter's mom and be like, or call my daughter and be like, child support's not gonna come this month. But but daddy made some really good artistic uh, choice. You know what I mean? Like not as far as selling out or anything, but like I need to make I need to like make money. Mm-hmm. So, cause if not, if I was like a rich kid or a rich old up kid, um, I just could still make music but i don't have to fucking i could play when i want not play when i want you just collaborated with travis barker of blink 182 you're right we did a song we did two songs but uh i just didn't know if he was gonna put them on his album or because there's political stuff because i got i just got my record label and stuff but uh we did do a song and actually it's more than you even know for your question because it's called fast life and it's a, a good song a super good song and a really good friend of mine uh andy irons who recently passed away uh three-time surfing world champion that was the so- he used that song for uh, his last part in his uh movie right, be- right before he passed away in his surfing movie and that's what it was fast life it's uh live fast die young and look good in your grave so it's pretty ironic since me and travis made that song three people died and three people as- that associated in the whole thing his assistant little chris who's the guy who brought me in there to work with travis on the song then am passed away who travis worked with 
and we moved together and then Andy who used the song for so any 